If you didn't hear Franklin Graham's prophetic warning to the church, listen up. Franklin Graham is one of the most powerful voices in Christianity today on both a spiritual and political level. This guy has connections with all the top world leaders and CEOs. Franklin Graham has devoted most of his life to meeting the needs of hurting and poor people around the world through his organization, Samaritan's Purse. But please, please, please take this message seriously that he's about to give right now. Please stop what you're doing and you're gonna wanna hear what his word is to America right now. But before I get started today, Hit subscribe to get more content like this in the future. I promise I'm gonna get you the best Christian content moving forward, no cookie cutter stuff, the stuff you're gonna wanna hear. So recently, at his keynote speech at the religious broadcaster event, Franklin Graham told us that there is a storm coming in America and we've got to be prepared. We cannot be deceived and we cannot be fooled. We need to get ready and we need to get prepared. So Franklin Graham is letting us know, listen, this storm is coming. It's political, it's geopolitical, it's financial, it's spiritual, and a war is being unleashed right before our eyes. And then he goes on to say this, which made headlines all around the world, that every demon in hell has been turned loose in our culture and in society. And God, if that, if you didn't hear anything else today, that is the message right now. Every demon in hell has been unleashed in the world and society. I don't know what happened during COVID and the presidential election, but this has been terrible. If you cannot see what's happening right now before our eyes, if you cannot see that everything changed and it changed for the worst very quickly, he says this, Franklin, the world has deteriorated so quickly. Boy, is that the truth. If you can't see this, you're spiritually blind. He goes on later to say, we're living in a cancer culture where big corporations want to destroy Christian organizations, he said. They want us to shut our mouths. They don't want to hear from us. Noting that if one doesn't talk about sin, or preach the gospel, then that person doesn't have anything to worry about in society, he added. But if you're going to proclaim the gospel, you are going to get persecuted and shut down. Graham also reminded those from across Christian media landscape of the importance of remaining faithful to the historic truths of scripture amid all of the coming storms. And so listen, I think there is a place in the world for the Joel Osteens and the mega church pastors. I really do. I think some of them have good messages, but a lot of it is not really preaching. It's more um, motivational talks. And those have their places because those get people in to become Christians. But the point is, is most of those churches don't address political issues. They don't address social issues and they kind of stay quiet because it's not good for business. So we, the everyday Christians, cannot remain silent. We have to talk. If you preach the gospel, if you open up and express your Christian values, you're pushing back on the culture that's going. Graham also said that the LBGTQ agenda is leading the cultural charge, right? And let me say right here, I'm not advocating hate towards, towards that community in any single way but we do want to stand up for our religious convictions. So Franklin goes on to say this, and he just has a great message. I love them enough. He's talking about the LGTV community. I love them enough to warn them that this way of life is sin, he said. He added, the gospel says this, this is sin. Graham also noted that many today want a soft pedal any message of salvation, any message of sin, in order to be friendlier to all groups and not hurt anybody's feelings or make waves. But that's what got us in this situation, folks. That's what got prayer taken out of school. That's what got the Ten Commandments removed from courts. That's what got this whole gender madness that's going on right now is because we've stayed silent, because we've had too many seeker-sensitive, gummy bear, watered-down Christian churches that have stayed silent and stayed out of the political talk. But Graham goes on later to say, just tell it the way it is. If there's any message for today, it's we've got to preach the gospel. We've got to call sin, sin. We've got to tell it the way it is. And he says, preach 
Don't back up. Don't make excuses for sin. Preach the gospel. Be true. And God, there are so many good, wonderful churches out there today, but so many messages are not preaching the gospel. They're not talking about sin. I saw a recent revival service online in, in the New York City area that was over the weekend. And basically, the whole two-hour message of this preaching was all about prosperity, was all about giving positive prophetic words. And there was no talk of sin, there was no talk of repentance, there was no talk of change. And I said to myself, that ain't no revival at all. Don't be fooled by that. The gospel must be preached. We must preach about sin. We must teach about changing, even for Christians that have been Christians for many years. We still have deeper levels to grow in God. We still have seen sin to resist. So Graham told the crowd, we cannot back up. We cannot retreat. Don't apologize for the gospel. Just declare it. Just preach it. Troy Miller, the president and CEO of the Natural Religious Broadcaster said, too often now we are seeing pastors and ministries fall by the wayside, complement compromising the truth of scripture and disintegrating into the fixtures of our culture. Boy, isn't that true? We're seeing now this watered down preacher preaching and a lot of this, uh, a lot of this Marxism and socialism found its way into the church. A lot of critical race theory and critical theory has found its way into the church, embracing social justice movements. And again, social justice is a good thing. But if we're going to do that with communist ideology and socialist ideology, it's not good. We're letting the devil into our churches. And basically, we're not preaching the truth. We're getting lost on the message of the gospel. So the CEO of the National Religious Broadcaster said, as our society is bombarded with anti-Christian hostility and contempt for the first American freedoms, Grant's message promises to deliver exactly what we need to hear as Christian leaders, a call to stand firm, not to bow to the cultural influences of the day. I was just reading this article about a kid that basically um, they were um, teaching and spreading the LGTV message at his school and people were wearing merchandise and backpacks and school bags. So he wore his shirt. There are only two genders. And he was immediately called into the principal's office and told to take off the shirt immediately. But the kids said, but wait a minute, um, there are other people spreading their messages. But they said, no, but your message is, is, is discluding people, is alienating people. You have to take off your shirt. So he brought it to the Supreme Court and then ended up losing that battle where they told him to basically, and he lost saying that he can't wear the shirt to school that says there are only two genders. So we're seeing this whole thing happen right before our eyes where we're beginning to gradually it's chipping away at our first amendment free freedom and let me just tell you to say something you cannot stay quiet during this time you cannot be the silent majority you cannot be people that are that are staying quiet that are not voicing yourself that are not fighting the culture wars that are not standing up Listen, it's very encouraging to see what happened to Bud Light. It's very encouraging to see what happened in Target. That is showing that Christians are standing up. Christians are sh having their voice. Christians are making their voices heard and it's making a big difference. Because when Target and Bud Light and big companies know like that, that we're not gonna stay silent, that we don't want to see this stuff. Listen, for me personally, I don't care what two adults do in the bedroom of their house. I have my ideas and I have my beliefs based on scripture, but the truth is what happened in Target is targeting children. They were making this LG TV merchandise for kids. It was in the kids section. We went straight from adults and, and, and straight from gay marriage into, into targeting children. This is just wrong. This is just wrong. These are minors. So right now we have an opportunity to let our voices be heard, to not stay silent, to push back, to pray, and to go to churches that will fight the cultural wars, that will make their voice known, 
that will make their presence known in the community. Pastors that will stand up, that will call companies and call to boycott, not pastors that are preaching watered down, gummy bear, Mickey Mouse services, sermons about not really facing any of the cultural issues of our day. We've lost too much ground. And we're getting to the point where basically there's no hope, but I still believe there is work to do. The gospel must be advanced and there is a hope. And as long until Jesus comes back, I'm going to occupy and spread the gospel. I'm not going to stay quiet. Guys, don't stay quiet. So on uh, tomorrow, on June 3rd, Franklin Graham is going to be preaching in Seoul, Korea for the 50th anniversary of his father's meeting there, where one million people attended to hear the gospel. So keep him in your prayers. Thank God for, for preachers like Franklin Graham that will stand up for the truth, that will make his voice known, and will push back on culture, put pressure on society, and not stay quiet. Thank you every day. Be blessed. Remember, Christianity is two things, to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and take that same love and love others with the love that God has given you. Be blessed.